No, I'm sorry. That's me. My fault. Can they hear us now? Can they hear me now? Yes. Thank Gang, you. Thank you. Okay. Well, I'll do that one over if you want. Uh, well, we might have to. Let's just, uh, yeah, we won't. Transfer Milburn, assigned B, things that fly. That's oh. the trio we just did, seven. Right. I gave it a seven clean background, held the white swell. If I do anything differently, I would try to get a little lower, closer to eye level. Like now we got to, well, we got to score the rest of them. Oh, you double scored oh, I it. I double scored it. That's my fault. Sorry. Well, that's what we get. Uh, that's what happens when you get a rookie. Evening swim. Okay. Well, I like that I can see the eye on the pelican. That's really nice. You might want to brighten the eye up a little bit. Uh, it, it's, you know, it's a dark eye on a dark skin. So that's, that's sometimes tough to see. Also, believe it or not, the background, although beautiful in color, it's a little, it's, it's so much more colorful than the bird. So it's detracting a little bit from the bird. You did a pretty good job though of holding the whites. There's a little, it looks a little blown out to me right under the pouch, right at the base of the neck. And I can point, but you're not going to see that any, anyway, but at the base of the neck, and uh, but I think you got some detail. That's always hard to tell whether it's blown out or whether it's just lacking detail because of it's white at that in that light. So I think I would have tried to find a little bit less busy background if I could. Um, but I'd still like to see this again. Seven coming at you. Okay. Well, that's an interesting, it's, they're in, interesting objects here, these these uh, flying jets. I like the uh, composition. I like them coming from the upper right in, on a diagonal towards the lower left. Uh, I like that you got the trails. That's pretty cool. That gives it a real sense of flying. I, I think the the uh, jets are sharp. It's it's hard to tell. They're, they're you know, they're, there's not a close-up one at all. So I'm going to guess that they're sharp. That's fine. And I don't think I have halos, but I do see something around them, but I don't know what it is. I don't know. Maybe that's actually from the heat of the engines and stuff like that. That could be out the back. I just don't understand what's coming out of the tails of the, uh, of the, of the uh, jets. But as I said, nice composition with the sky, the simple sky. That's great. Uh, I'll see this one again too. Seven. New Jersey Air National Guard. Okay, this one's nice and up close. Uh, I like the simple background. Uh, I like the, I guess, smoke, steam, whatever coming off the wings. Uh, that makes it, it gives it a really sense of dynamicness and our dynamicism and a real sense of motion and movement and speed. Uh, I like that you can even see the pilot. This is a pretty cool shot that way. Uh, and of course, you kept it on the diagonal for, for better interest. Seven. Spring. Okay. Oh, it's a hop. <laughs> okay, this is a nice picture of a, a mockingbird in hopping, it looks like, or possibly starting to do a takeoff. Uh, I assume that's true because there's no branch there. <laughs> so, uh, and his posture is a little different. So that's cool. Uh, you held the whites pretty well on the bird and you got a very, a nice sharp eye from what I can see. Um, the background is a little busy for this. And also the tonalities are very similar. You have got white flowers with a grayish background and you got a gray and white bird. So you start losing the bird against the background. I think it's a, a good capture. Uh, and, but I, I think it could have been improved and I'd like to see it again, regardless. Seven. Seven. Sorry. Seven. Okay. Yeah. Flying in formation. Okay. Okay. Not quite a, di a diagonal, but it does have a sense of movement. You, you left the room in the front, which is good. Show us where they're going to some room to move in the image. I like the seeing the trails of at least three out of four. Who knows what happened to number four, the second one there. Uh, there is a little bit of overlap in the lower two, but 
and actually in the upper two, but you know, for the most part, you can see all of the bodies of the plane. And I guess, and you know, they're in formation, a tight formation. So that's hard to get them really totally separated. Um, but if you could, that would, I think, make it even better. Uh, nice clean background, another seven to look at later. Hmm. Coast Guard helicopter. Okay. okay, I like the motion of the blades of the helicopter. Uh, I like that some of them really look static and some of them look in motion. Uh, and I, you got a pretty good sharp image. One thing I would have liked, and when I see the man on the outside of it, I almost didn't see the person or maybe a woman on the outside of the helicopter coming out of the door there. I would have liked to have that, that all the darkness inside the cockpit opened up a little bit and a little brighter. You know, let's see a little bit more in those shadows, what's going on there. It, I realize that's probably hard to do. You have a bright sky and you have a, some darkness on that, uh, that helicopter. So there's a, some dynamic range to contend with, but you got a nice sharp image and a uh, good clean background. And I will see this one again. Float. Okay, it could fly. So this is a nice, I'll call it a simple, I mean, it might not have been simple to capture, but it is simple in the sense that it's got more geometry to it. And it's more of an abstract in some ways, although you have a real thing there that you can see it, a floating feather, which can fly if it was attached to a bird, <laughs> but in any case, so I like the movement of the water through the picture. Uh, what I might've done though, is I might've uh, cropped out the top, that really top edge of the water, just because I don't know that that is helping the image. And I actually would have liked to seen the feather a little bigger in the image. So possibly uh, cropping it a little bit more keeping the two, the thick white and the lower white, but I think that would have helped this image a bit. Uh, I, I think it's sharp, not quite sure where I'm looking at it. I'll, I'll give it the benefit of the doubt. Um, I'm, I'm gonna, but I'm gonna give this one a six. My territory. Yes. Okay. You, you okay with the yes. projection? Okay, good. Wanna... Yeah, you get so used to seeing them on yeah. Zoom that you know you're back to seeing projected. You you have to realize what I'm, I have to realize what I'm seeing. Okay, so nice capture of the red wing blackbird. I love that his mouth is open. Uh, the epaulets are showing. That's great. Okay, you need uh, there's some some things you could use in this image. Uh, one, the reds are starting to bleed a little bit, so I'm not seeing a lot of detail in the reds. So you might have to pull back your exposure for that or desaturated in post because you're going to have, you have another image, a part where you have a lot of shadows here and that could be time of day. Uh, and so the breast and the underside of that bird is really blocked up and blacked out. So it might be time of day. You might've had to increase the exposure form to get a little bit more on that. Um, so for this one, you know, you got an interesting subject, you placed it nicely and you have it on some, you have a grounding with the vegetation, but I think technically it has some uh, drawbacks there. Six. T-28 Trojan Thunder Formation Team. Okay. Nice separation in the subjects. So like, again, the trails are showing the movement. You gave a little bit more room in the front. And considering that the uh, the planes themselves are spread out a bit through the image, that's probably the right amount to leave. Uh, in a nice, clean background, simple image, looks pretty sharp. Uh, seven. Okay, so now we'll have to redo that seven seven as well. Yeah. Okay, okay, and just just for folks to know, when I go through the sevens now, a lot of the things that are going to make the difference between a seven eight and nine, some of it might be technical things, but generally by now you're you've got a pretty good technical image. A lot of it's going to be impact. So and that's certainly subjective. Okay, let's see if we can rescore. The, or, that's what I'm trying to. Yeah, let's see what we can do. I'll just okay. Yeah, I'm trying to. Okay, how do we get rid of that? Fixed score. 
That's what I did. And oh, that then didn't show the score. No, it, it went back. It just. Oh. Uh, you know what? Show me that one. And then I can tell you the, or show me the others, and then go back and show me that one, and I'll just tell you the award for that okay. one, okay? Or the non-award, either that, it either stays a seven or will go up or down, okay? Does that sound good? Yes, thank you. Oh, how are we going to know it's that one? We should do it first, sorry. And we'll, we'll go, just so evening swim is the first one. Okay, easy swim. Seven. Eight. Nine, there's so many good things in this, but the background just detracts from it. Uh, seven, nine, eight, eight, okay. Is that okay? One of the seven sevens we have to fix that one. Okay, I'm going to give that a nine. So let's see if it comes back out now. As what does it come out as? Yeah, okay. So there it is. So you can assign that one okay. and then sign the others. Harper Milburn to sign B, Things That Fly. Honorable mention. Coming at you, Edward Shulman. Coast Guard hel Helicopter, Al Seguccio. T-28 Trojan Thunder Formation Team, Al Seguccio. Sign things, things That Fly Equal Merit. Trio, Wayne Quinto. New Jersey Air National Guard, Al Faguccio. Flying information, Edward Schulman. Okay, that worked pretty good. Okay, we got assigned A, 12. Assigned A, things that fly. Twin geese. Gotta, okay, try the phone. One second, folks. Well, it's starting to look pretty. That's close to we're going to get it. That's better, isn't it? I think so. Yeah. Okay. Yep. Okay. Okay. The twin geese. Well, you have a nice, simple background with the lawn. That's that's good for this, and that helps the geese to stand out. It's so hard to see the eyes on the geese. They're just, they're dark on dark. And I'm surprised to see the white, the white little eyebrow things, but okay, that's that's part of them. Uh, you held the whites pretty well. Actually, I can see detail in all of the whites. Well, now there's one area where I think I, right on the one who's, the one, uh, the geese that's laying down, right at the top of the chest, right before the black neck starts. It looks like we lost a little detail there, but by and large, you kept detail throughout. And I like the detail in the feathers. Mm -hmm. Okay, seven. Purple dam damselfly, oh, okay. close up. Okay, nice close up of the damselfly. One, I like the positioning. I like the the branch coming through, and I like that the damselfly now is on the diagonal because of the or the yeah that is a damselfly because of the way it's uh, positioned sitting on that particular branch. Uh, the, everything looks really nice and sharp. I like being able to see the sharp eyes and the wings are beautiful as well. Simple background. Seven. Osprey waiting for dinner. 
okay, waiting for dinner. I hope he got it. <laughs> anyway, okay, so I'm looking at the contrast between the darks and the lights, and it is a little contrasty. Uh, I, I think I think he held the whites pretty well. There are a couple of places, though, where I think they are blown out a little bit. And I really would have liked to have seen the eye a little uh, more open up and a little more prominent. We got a shadow on the, on the osprey's face on that side of the, on the side of the face that's facing us, and that's a little tough. Okay, you know the background seems busy, but that doesn't bother me because this, for some reason, I'm really focused on the bird in the water here. Oh, seven bird on a branch. Okay. All right, our sparrow is on a branch looking slightly away. So we also didn't get a catch light in the eye because of partly because of that, or just because it has a dark eye. Uh, you held the whites well, since again, this is another bird that has whites and darks. Uh, and you've got it nice and sharp. We see all that beautiful feather detail. I also like the positioning of the, the uh, branch. And the way your bird is on the branch, I probably would have given a little bit more on the left because it's looking, your bird is looking to the left. So I might have given a little bit more there. And are those smudges on the, on the, um, you see little smudges on the right? Are they, they're not on the picture. They're yeah, on the, they're on the they're, picture. Yeah. Oh, they're actually on the yes. picture. Okay. And then you should watch out. You have some smudges. They could be dust bunnies or stuff. I don't know if you removed anything. I'll have some little smudges on the right, close to the border. Uh, and a little bit in front of him too. Mm. Uh, because of those six, because that to me is a processing issue. Or, or captures. Okay, here we got a cormorant. Uh huh. And okay, I like that. I loved seeing their beautiful blue eye, blue green eyes. Um, and you got them looking over the shoulder, so you got them looking at us. Uh, pretty good detail in the focus, and I like the the vegetation. The background is very nicely, it's sort of muted. What I might have done, though, is I might have toned down the brightness on the railing that the cormorant is sitting on. That's pretty bright, and your eye goes to one of the brightest things first in a picture. And so it's going there, and that's detracting from your, your cormorant. I'm going to give this a six because of that, because, you know, you really want my eye to go to that cormorant. Dragonfly hanging out over the pond. Okay. Interesting perspective with the very up and down uh, vertical capture here. Uh, you know, that works. I mean, you could have put it on diagonal and that would have worked fine too, possibly a little bit more dynamic. But I, but you get such a sharp image here of your both of the leaf that he's on as, as well as the dragonfly. Everything looks nice and sharp. I know he's looking away from us and it would be even more interesting if it was looking towards us. And I do like the simple background. It might have been possible to crop some of this out, but I think that's just a matter of taste. Seven. Peregrine falcon. Okay. Okay, I like the peregrine looking at me. I like the catch light in the eye. Um, I like the way the the I like the diagonal. So I really like the composition. I think you handled the lights and darks well. Again, another dark and white bird. A lot of birds are, and I think you capture that pretty well. I, you know, I probably maybe this is picky. I might have gotten rid of that little bright part of the branch that's sticking up, that's bare and sticking up. Um, or or I would have toned it down a little bit. It's just really distracting. But I'm going to, uh, that this time the bird is much more powerful to me. And so I'm going to see this one again, seven. Ibis. Mm -hmm. Okay. I like the clean sky background. I like that you got the bird with his mouth open doing something in, in addition to flying. So that makes it a little more interesting. Uh, you held the whites pretty well on the back. Pretty well, yeah. Uh, and this is a really dark bird. So you might even wanted to bring out the eye a little bit more on this bird. I mean, it it's there, it's focused, it's sharp. Uh, sometimes you just get to give it a little bit of help. 
but I think it's done pretty well because my eye keeps going back to his face. So I like to see it again, seven. Bird by the sea. Okay. For me, this bird has a color cast. Uh, it, you know, you're nice and low. I like that. I like the diagonal of the of the surf going through the image. But the bird has like a purplish color cast, and that's distracting because these birds aren't purple. No, they are not purple. Brown maybe, but not so much purple. So uh, I'm taking this as a perspective that. You're showing me something that flies. I don't think you were trying to make it creative, <laughs> different colors. So I'm going to give this a six. Hooking up, mating dragonflies. Very nice image. And I like the clean white background to show off these dragonflies because you're, the wings show off right through the wings. Very nice and sharp. I like the uh, the... A leaf going through it, the dried leaf. What I might have done was I might have toned down the leaf a little bit. It, it is pretty bright, but thank goodness these dragonflies have a lot of color to them as well. So I'd like to see it again. Seven. Egret. Okay. You got nice and low, and you kept the whites for the egret. That's good and you know the uh the wall that it's standing on is not overly bright so it's not detracting from my egret what is detracting though from my egret a bit is the sea wall that goes through his body at least it's not going right through his head um so i mean it could be better could be worse so <laughs> so this is the way it is but i think he kept it got a good shot of the egret i'll see it again seven mom's got lynch Okay, got lunch. Okay, that's fine. Uh, these are hard to get, and this one proves why. There's so much activity going on in this nest when mom comes in or dad comes in with the food. And so we, and, and you have to really understand the story, and I do understand the story. So we've got mom's beak inside a baby's beak, and a pretty big baby's beak at this point, giving them the baby the food. You kept the whites pretty well. There is a little bit of softness in some of it, but that's probably the lighting you're in. And uh, it's on the nest, so that is the environment. What I might have done, though, is there are some white spots in the left upper left-hand corner, probably another bird in the background. I probably would have tried to got, got rid of those. You know, I just, we didn't need those. But the action going on is good. Um, I think it tells a good story. Um, seven. Okay, go through sevens. Again, I'm going to call this a seven. Again, I'm looking for something exciting and bringing out the emotion, whatever. And I'm not getting that on this. It's a good image, but it's a good image of, you know, two sitting geese. So seven. Nine, eight, nine. Okay. I'm going to go with eight, eight, nine, seven. Eight. Signed A, things that fly. Osprey waiting, Charlene Federowitz, honorable mention. Peregrine Falcon, Charlene Federowitz. Ibis, Jim Chelan. Mom's Got Lunch, Jim Chelan. Equal Merit, Purple Damselfly, Wendy Milligan. Dragonfly Hanging Out Over the Pond, Wendy Milligan. 
Hooking up, mating dragonflies, Wendy Milligan. Eight to score. Assign salon, things that fly. Okay, we have the osprey here. Really nice. Uh, it was a marshmallow and marauder. And that's okay. Um, and it really fills the frame. That I really like that. That's nice. You caught it in a nice uh, banking motion. And you really captured the whites and the detail under the the wings. So this is a nice sharp image and a good and good capture. Seven. Boring owl and habitat. Wow. Um, what a big, big eye. Okay. So you got nice and low. So you were right eye level with the, the owl. You used a shallow depth of field. So there's a little bit of the front that's out of focus, and but the background is nicely out of focus. And so our owl's really standing out there. I might what I might have done, and this is just an idea, is sometimes when the out there's out of focus in the front, I will I will tone it down a little bit because we got a lot of speckling in there that could compete with my owl, the owl. And I want the person's eye, I want the viewer's eye to stay on that owl. Uh, but that big eye on the owl really captures you. I still give this a seven and look at it again, but that's just a thought for future processing. Immature white ibis. Okay. Nice capture, good and sharp, like the way the... Uh, I like the way the branch is going through it, but I don't like the spots on the background. I don't know if that was intentional or what, because it looks like there's a, the whole background could be a little spotty, but on the bottom right, there are two looks like water spots. So I, I'm not quite sure what that is. You know, I'm going to give it the benefit of the doubt in this case. And I might be inconsistent with what I did before, uh, but this is a really sharp image. And if that's truly on your image, those bots, you might, you should really go get rid of them. But I'd like to look at it again, seven. Inbound. Huh? Yeah. Coming right at us. Well, that sort of gets your attention coming right at you. Very nice and sharp. I actually get a hint of the, of the, of the pilot in the, or the co-pilot in the cockpit. Wish I could see that a little better. You might want to try opening the shadows on that. If you go back to this image. But I like the image. I, you know, you cut off the wings. You didn't just clip it. Or maybe you did clip it. But it looks intentional. So it looks it looks good. And I like the symmetry. Um, and it's a nice sharp image with a, with a clean background. Seven. Brisk morning. Oh, yeah. Okay. I love seeing the breath on the air of the, of the, um, I'm sorry, the red shoulder, the, uh, the blackbird, the red winged blackbird. Uh, and I also like seeing that I can see some of the yellow in the epaulets as well as the red. And I love the feathers all fluffed up. I'm not sure about the lighting, but I'm sure this was the tr creative choice of the person who took the image of the photographer. And maybe the lighting was that way, all that red and golden. That could be a morning. It just obviously looks like a morning shot to see the breath on it. But I still like being able to see the bird and the breath. I might have toned down some of the yellows on the bottom just a little bit. I'd like to see it again, seven. Glossy Ibis. Boy, you caught the glossiness, whoever the photographer is on this one. And you've really got a nice sharp face and the background is, is nicely muted. It's there, it's in focus pretty much the background, but it's toned down so that it's not distracting from the bird. I might even have toned down some of the front uh, very bright green, yellowish green, uh, the evergreens in the front. I might have toned that down just a little bit, uh, desaturated maybe. Okay. But it's still a nice, good, sharp image. So I'd like to see it again. Seven. Mellow yellow. Okay. I like this image. I like the vertical version of it, the the portrait version. I like the the clean background and the way the leaf is going through. I just don't feel like the body and the head of the damselfly. I assume it could be one of the various uh, dragonflies that fold back their wings. I just don't feel like the head and the body are sharp though. 
some of the parts down the the thorax are, are, are down the tail are sharp. I'll see it again seven, just because I'm not so sure about that. LBH wheels up. Mm -hmm. So nice capture of bird in flight taking off. I I like the way you handled the background here. Uh, and I like the sharpness of the bird coming and the direction that the bird is going. So the position the compositionally is really nice. And you got a lot of good feather detail in this bird. Again, I might have toned down or desaturated a little bit of the bright greens around the bird, but he still, this bird still stands out well. Seven. Oh, I got all sevens. Okay. Why not? <laughs> nine. Still going to give this a nine. Has a lot of impact. Eight. Eight. Also an eight. I just think with the toning down of that, uh, the the golden on the bottom, I think it would make my eyes stay more with the bird. I'll give this a nine. Seven. Nine. Science Salon, things that fly. Honorable mention. Immature white ibis, Ellen Stein. Inbound, Al Brown. Brisk morning, Arlene Sopensetti. Equal merit. Marshland Marauder, Al Brown. Boring Owl and Habitat, Arlene Sopensetti. Glossy Ibis, Ellen Stein. LBH reels up, Ellen Stein. <laughs> All right, now open, open. 17. Millburn camera, open B. Wall. I like this image. I like it because of its simplicity. I like the geometric patterns that it shows. I And I'm particularly happy that you got the, the photographer caught the shadow around the frame of the door because that adds to that. Yeah, I, I, it, it's, it may be simple, but it has a good feeling to it. Seven. Outlier. Um, okay, very nice artistic effect. And I like that the center flower is in focus. You know, the uh, centers of the flower. It might be a little much and distracting. One thing I probably would have done is I might have cut out the top, the flower that's at the very top because it's pretty bright uh, and it's, and uh, and it is blurred, which that's fine. That's part of the, the effect that's on it. But I think that that takes away a little bit from your other flower. I'd like to see it again, though, seven. Full moon flight. Very nice image. I like to see, I like that you caught the plane going into the full moon. I like the detail on the full moon. I, I also like the um, the trailing, it looks like trailing gases or uh, uh, heat coming off the, the plane, the uh, vapor coming off the, uh, the engines. Seven. Dialed. Oh, cool. This is B, right? This is cool. Yes. Okay, nice nice capture. I like your perspective. I like the diagonal perspective of all the dials going in. And even the highlights, you know, some of them I might have toned down a little bit, but you can't get rid of them all because it really gives the 3D as aspect. But I might have toned down some of those, uh, the reflected highlights on the bottom right, near the bottom right. But I'd like to see it again, seven. 
up the East River. Okay, a nice shot of the skyline. Uh, I'm I'm debating whether it's got a whether the uh, horizon is level or not. Well, it's real close. If it's not, it's just if it's hard enough that I can't tell, then okay, then, then it must be even enough. Okay, uh, I like that you minimize the sky. You could have even minimized it a little bit more. There's not a lot going on in that sky, and and you kept the. Uh, that kept the buildings in, in focus and in good detail. The whites and the boats are a little hot, uh, the white, uh, the big white boats. So you might want to take that down a little bit. I'll see it again, Seven. Daisy. <laughs> Hello, cutie. Well, you caught a lot of the fur detail here and the textures in the, in the uh, chair itself. So uh, I just wish Daisy was looking at us, but you did capture the eyes and you got a highlight in the eyes and the nose and everything's nice and sharp. Okay, I, I, I was contemplating about the cut off paw, but, but I guess that's okay. I'll, I'll go with that, seven. Reflection, reflection space. This has a really nice feel to it. And I think it's the lighting that you've uh, the photographers captured in this image. Uh, and I don't know if I would have cut off more of the pool, but it actually fit, fits very well with all the lovely serene blue complementing the nice warm light coming in. And I like the long shadows that you're getting from the furniture. I'm not big on architecture pictures, but for, for what this is, this is nice. Seven. Basilica arches. You handled the, the photographer handled the lighting in here very well. I'm sure this could have been rather difficult. Uh, and, and the arches really come out nicely. Yeah. I'm debating whether keeping the, the pictures on the left and the right uh, from the arches are needed, but they're part of the image. And I guess it gives it a, a sense of location and position and some perspective. Seven. Tiger Bob. Okay. I like I I like the way you've positioned this flower in the image on the sort of a diagonal itself, the the flower itself. These are hard image, uh, hard flowers because they actually have a lot more depth of field than you might think. But it looks like you did a pretty good job capturing the uh, getting in focus the the from the from the very deepness of the flower all the way out. You lose some depth of uh, some depth of field or something along the edges of some of the flowers, but the main part is that centerpiece. Another seven. I'm going to have a lot to go through. Real. Okay. Okay. This is well handled. I don't know that it has the impact that a lot of the other images have. I like the. I mean, I think you handled the lighting here well, and I like that you that the, the photographer used it as a very uh, centered and uh, geometrically centered because if it works well. Well, it's just not that interesting an image, uh, imp impact-wise. Six. Down the path. Okay. I like the perspective. I like going down the path. I like the, that we have somebody at the end of the path going through like the gate at the end. What I would do differently, I think, is I, I'm not thrilled about the blue sky in the upper right-hand corner. It's sort of bright, and it sort of takes my eye away from going down the path. Boy, if you just cropped it and cropped that part out, I think you'd still have a really nice image. You'd still have a lot of path. Just my opinion, but that's my thought because my eye keeps going up to that corner. Six. Sunflower. Okay. You cut a lot of detail in the sunflower, both in the center part on the seed heads 
as well as in the petals. I'm not sure why you cropped off the the brown circular part. Uh, you know, that's that's clipped at the top. It just seems like you would have added that and left that in. Um, but that's that's a choice, I guess. Okay. It is pretty central otherwise, and that, that works all right with this. Uh, I'll, I'll see it again, Seven. Coney Island. So this is a, a contrast in, in textures. I love the rolling textures of the boards going across as we come in, and I like that they are taking me from taking me in on a diagonal. I'm okay when I get to the pier. But the part that's bothering me is that there's a lot of space where you go out and look over the water in the upper right hand corner. And for that, that's not that's not really adding to it for me. I mean, I like all the other geometrical patterns, so I might have actually cut it off a little bit more, made it very abstract. Six. Wrought iron and brick. Okay, N nice, simple idea. Lovely use of the diagonal for the stairs and the wrought iron and, of course, the brick. And there's that nice contrast between the smoothness of the cement and the roughness of the brick. And then, of course, the smoothness of the wrought iron of uh, the railing. The one thing I'm not sure about is keeping the window. Just that little sliver of window in the upper left. Okay. It's there. I don't know what else to make of it. Maybe it does give it a little bit more interest. I'll see it again, seven. Busy bee. Okay. Nice handling of the background, whether it's whether it was an artificial background or not, or whether you changed the background. If you did, you did a pretty good job of it. But anyway, I like the bee. It's the bee is pretty sharp, I think, and I like that it's the flowers that it's on. The lighting's really nice too. That coming down from the top. I might have cut a little bit off from the top, but that's probably just personal opinion. Uh, seven. Pruned. Okay, again, lots of geometrical shapes in here. Uh, using the reflection uh, to give us a lot of those shapes. And it's interesting how we have the golden light at certain spots and all otherwise the more bluish light throughout. Interestingly enough, though, that warm light at the top, right at the top, just off to the left of center, uh, it keeps taking my eye up there. And I don't know that that's where you want my eye to go. Mm -hmm. But I think this is creative, and I think somebody really took some time to look at this. So I'm going to give it a seven. I, I'll take another look at it. Eastern tigers, swallowtails. Okay. Uh, the swallowtail looks nice. You got it pretty well in plain, which is great because that's the way to get them pretty sharp all throughout. Mm. The flowers are very nice. What I would have done though is uh, the flower on the right lower side that's out of focus is very bright. So if we we're gonna keep that in there, I think you need to tone it down. Otherwise your eye keeps going to that and away from your butterfly. You know, otherwise, I mean, it seems to have a busy background, but I don't think that would be so bothersome except for that that one part. So a six. Okay, great. Eight. Well, I'm going to give this an eight, but I still think it could have been cropped and I think it would be stronger, but it, I'll give it an eight. I just like the creativity. Nine. Nine. Seven. Eight. Eight. Seven.
eight, 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 nine, seven, Open B, honorable mention, Wall, Wayne Quinto. Outlier, Fernando Gomes. Daisy, Edward Schulman. Reflection Space, Wayne Quinto. Tiger Bob, Al Faguccio. Sunflower, Edward Schulman. Word Iron and Brick, Fernando Gomes. Equal Merit, Full Moon Flight, Al Faguccio. Dial, Kylie Gomes. Busy B, Al Faguccio. Okay. Open Day. Open A. Still Life Study. Nice use of light, which is so important in all photography, but especially in still life. I like all the textures that you've gotten here. I, you know, I like the rough texture of the background, and then I like the smooth texture, particularly of the peppers, all the peppers. And then you have the, then you have the basket and all these other things. So the detail is wonderful. I might have cropped a little bit from the top. I just feel we're a little top heavy here, but I'd like to see it again. Seven. The stare down red fox. Hmm. Okay, uh, the fox position is really nice. You got pretty low and the fox is looking not quite at us, but someplace toward us. Um, the background's a little busy, but that's usually where the foxes are, right along the edge of the woods. Um, the only thing about this fox is it looks a little over sharpened. And, and I don't know if, you know, he just, that was his fur or not. So I'm gonna give the benefit of the doubt on that. Um, seven. Chain. Mm, nice, nice set of colors, nice set of shapes and textures. Uh, I don't know how I would have done it. And maybe it would have had to be uh, changing the way you shot this, but I probably would not have included the uh, upper right-hand corner. No, left-hand corner, sorry. That's very dark. That's just a little too dark for the rest of it. And there's a little bit of piece coming off in the right, upper right corner. That's just edging in. I just think there's a lot going on here that's very beautiful, and I, but I think the composition could have been a little stronger. Six. Old Rusty at dawn, mm -hmm. at dusk. Nice time to capture it, you know, with the lights on, that nice globe, still got some, some sky. Uh, it, it's a tough picture because you've got the tall, tall, tower of the lighthouse and then the house and above the house the sky's not that exciting so you've got a lot of empty space there but it still gives a nice feel this has a nice ambience from that uh, evening glow i'd like to see it again seven can't fly nail to the pavement <laughs> okay so this for me this is a study in colors oh the textures and the colors and the geometry you know, with with the flag and the flowers and the and the and the rooster itself. So there's a lot going on there. I would probably have not included this little black step in the lower right corner, and I'd watch out. There's something going on in the upper left corner, a little white spot there. So I would be careful about those, and I'd probably just get rid of them. Um, six. Ghost tree, family in the fog. One of those nice simple images or seemingly simple image with the fog and then this creating a lot of, uh, making it look more geometric. 
So I like these simple images. I like the gradient of color from top to bottom. I like the darker bottom. Well, I'll see this again, seven. Orchid. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, nice position of the flower. Uh, it's sort of floating, you know, we don't have the, the stem of the flower, but that's okay. And I'll, I'll assume that the speckles in the background are just basically there, and that's part of the background. What is bothering me about the flower is the reds in the lower part of the, the bell of the flower. And they just look a little oversaturated and are starting to lose some of their uh, textures for me. And I think it could be a little sharper in the center. Uh, right as you go into the bell of the of the flower. Six. Blossoms at the bridge. Okay. I like the bridge. I like the blossoms. See, I even like the bit of the sky that you kept. Uh, I don't know what's going on in the upper left or uh, right-hand corner. That could just be the way the sky was, but it's a little odd, and I probably would have gotten rid of it. And I think this is one where you don't need quite so much foreground. Uh, two things I think would happen. First of all, the black top isn't that interesting. It's not as interesting as the textures in the wooden bridge. And I think if you cropped out more of that black top or all of the black top, then you'd really come in closer to the bridge and you'd see more of its texture. Six. The last resort. <laughs> okay some other resort okay now i don't know this this image is going uphill for me <laughs> so it just seems like we're on a slant so i i, I think you might want to watch your leveling whoever took this picture and uh it's got some interesting colors in it too the purple purple okay I just, I, you know, I find out we have we have a lot of light. We have these dark holes, and I just like a little less. I think I'd really like to be looking at something specific. And I know we have the pond in front of us with a chair or whatever in it, but that's just not enough to really hold my eye, especially not when you got all the white out in here in the center. So my eye goes to the white in the center, and it goes away from the pond, which might be the most interesting thing. So I think I need more of a center of interest and i think we have a little too much here six broken beauty okay now we don't have too much here we have a, i have a center of interest and i actually like the textures i like the broken windows i like the the, the position of the window you know it's not dead center we got some more below than above and i like that we you kept the uh, the little bit of vine there I might have given this a little bit of levels and more levels and curves to give a little more contrast, but I'd like to see it again, seven. Bird in a tree. <laughs> okay, talking about levels of, uh, you know, contrast. Here we got us this house sparrow. So, yes. Okay. Well, it's looking right at us. It's, the head is sharp. It's a little distracting with the very, very, very dark vignette. I, I just don't think that's helping us any. So the bird is really punched up to be bright. We have that very dark vignette. I'm just struggling with the composition here. So six. Five, four. Okay. Nine, seven, eight. 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 Excuse me. Honorable mention, open A. Old Rusty at Dark, Jim Chalam. Go ahead. 
Ghost Tree Family in the Fog, Wendy Milligan. Broken Beauty, Wendy Milligan. Equal Merit, Still Life Study, Charlene Ferowitz. Okay. Excuse me. Open Salon. Adrian. Open Salon. Pink Magnolia. Lovely capture. Like the simple background, like the position of the flower in the in the frame. And I really like the stem coming in from that position. You held the whites very well, so we have detail throughout, as well as the pinky reds, because either one of those could be blown out and lose detail. And I see detail throughout. Seven. Wow. Diamond and ruby eclipse ring. Very nicely done. Okay. Um, okay, I think the, the lighting is well handled. I mean, we see the discs, we see the the ring around it, and of course we have the diamond. Now the diamond's really, really hot, but I guess, you know, that's the way this is supposed to be, and that's what makes it a diamond. I love seeing the corona, all the little things coming off the, the uh, sun in that one. I'll see this again, Seven. Brothers in Arms. Nice capture. I mean, this is this is not my genre, uh, but I'll tell you, this is a nice capture. The you, I, you don't have both of their heads because obviously they're giving a, giving a hug, but you do see the one man's face, and I like that you kept the the photographer kept the background. You can you get the sense that there's a crowd back there, and they but they're blurred out. One thing I might have done was the pinks in the cloud uh, and the crowd are a little bright. I mean, they're almost as bright as the white, uh, the pinks on their uh, sweatbands on their wrists. So I think I would have toned that down just a little bit, the background. But it's still a good capture. And I'd be careful, there's something green coming in on the left side. So little things like that, I think would, would elevate this even a little more. Seven. Unopened purple tulip. Okay, nice natural looking, but dif uh, diffused background. Uh, it still gives the idea that there's vegetation back there, but not distracting. I like the position and the coming, uh, the diagonal of the stem. I like seeing all that detail. It gets a little hot on the right side where the light's coming on the flower. You know, there's a little bit of uh, hotness there. And I don't know if you could have toned it down, but I'm afraid that if you toned it down too much, it'll take away the the uh, 3D-ness of the, of the flower. I'd like to see it again, seven. Winter Vineyard. Mm. Well, now this certainly has a mood to it. What with the sky and the vineyards with no leaves on them anymore. Uh, you know, the harvest it must be in. It almost looks desolate though. And I, and I love the leading lines of the rose taking you into the picture. Nice capture. I might not, be careful. I think, you know, I think you could have gotten a little bit more detail on some of the black vines. Uh, but I don't know, you would have to do that pretty selectively because you do have white points and you have black points. Seven. Break at the open. Okay. Okay, you got good detail on this. Uh, the You know, the whites are held for everything that has uh, texture in it. Obviously the signage might not have that much texture. Actually, it does have some texture too. Uh, okay. Okay. Nice capture of the athlete holding his racket. Good detail throughout. Nice depth of field. Seven. Pink tulip. Mm. Nice lighting on this. A little bit from the bottom too, because you lit up the bottom stem a little bit. So again, coming in from the diagonal, keeping the stem so we have a an anchor for our flower, but then getting a lot of nice detail and structure in that flower. Very pretty. Seven. Laundry day. I like the story this tells, you know, with the barn in the background and the laundry to say, oh, here we are, we're out, we have all the clothing out and the colors. I don't know if all those colors were in there, but they're in there now. Uh, and I like that you minimize the sky. One thing I would have done is, I don't know, I might have tried to get rid of the little tree poking out on the left-hand corner. 
I mean, the left-hand side, you know, just a little intrusion, but it's very minor. I'd like to see it again, seven. I got all sevens. Okay. <laughs> got my work cut out. Nine. Nine. Seven. Eight. Nine, eight, nine. Oh, boy. I'm sorry, I'm struggling with this one. <laughs> Can't give it eight and a half. I'll do an eight. Open salon, honorable mention, an open purple tulip, Ellen Stein. Break at the open, Al Brown. Laundry day, Arlene Sopanzetti. Equal merit, pink magnolia, Ellen Stein. Diamond and ruby eclipse ring, Arlene Sopanzetti. Winter Vineyard, Arlene Sopanzetti. Pink Tulip, Ellen Stein. Here the we go. flowers had it on that one. Yeah, oh, yeah. <laughs> Some really nice images. Thank you. That was that was good. Very nice. Does anyone online have uh, any questions for our judge? If not, I'll say good night to everybody. No question. Just thanks, Becky. I learned a lot just by listening. Thank you. Good night. Good night.